All right, my friends, you asked for it, and now you're going to get it. Today, I embark on the very long-term project of rating all the mechs that are from the Tech Readout 3050 period in the Intersphere side. In case you missed it, I put up a poll a while ago asking people what they wanted me to focus on with future mech rankings. And, you know, about 20% of you guys responded, so it feels like it must be representative of the sentiment that's out there. And the decisive winner of that poll was start rating inner sphere mechs from 3050. So I'm thinking if I'm going to do this, I'm going to really do it. So I'm going to rate every variant that's available at the time of Tech Readout 3050, including some variants that they didn't release until later, but that did show up in Tech Readout 3050. So like, for example, the Steiner Banshee, uh, wasn't actually available technically until 3053, but I'm going to rate that mech in this process. So let's just go in alphabetical order and get her done. Um, so the first is the Annihilator ANH-2A, right? And this is a mech that it's a Wolf's Dragoons mech, but it's also available to a lot of other factions, including Federated Commonwealth and other mercenaries. And it is certainly an interesting one. Now 2-3 is obviously a really sucky movement profile for a mech. On the plus side, it really reduces the battle value of this thing, okay? And the armor sucks as well, but again, that's significantly reducing the battle value. It does bring to bear four LB-10Xs, which is, you know, just think for a second about what that is, right? You could blast with 40 pellets from those things. If you're shooting at aircraft, you know, VTOLs or aerospace fighters, that's going to have some insane effects on those things. Like you can just erase those kinds of units. So this has some real power. And if you're firing solid shot, it's, it's kind of like hitting with an awesome 9Q, right? You got four 10 point shots, which is not nothing. That's a lot of concentrated damage that you're capable of as well. Medium pulse lasers are certainly a good backup weapon, although the mech doesn't exactly have, you know, sufficient heat sinks to shoot those. Uh, obviously, this mech could have been a lot better if, for example, they gave it double heat sinks and put those seven tons into armor or something like that. Yeah, or like a bigger engine, okay? There's a lot of ways that this mech could have been better. Now, I'll tell you how I'm going to be rating these things. I'm going to give them a combat score. Okay, the combat score is basically... How good is it compared with mechs of this tonnage, right? How good is it for what you expect from a mech of this tonnage? And then I'm going to rate it uh, a BV value rating. You know, there's redundancy here. Uh, you know, make fun of me if you want for saying battle value value. But I couldn't think of a better name for what I'm getting at here. That's a rating of how efficient is this thing? How good is it compared with other mechs? what you expect from mechs of this battle value. And as you can see, I think the Annihilator 2A is pretty sucky for its tonnage, right? Most other 100 ton mechs are going to have significant advantages over this thing. But for the battle value, I think it's playable. I, I've never played with it. You know, I, I, the mech came out when I was a kid. And back then, there wasn't such a thing as battle value. And so you know, you just looked at it, it's a 100 ton mech, it's got 200 points of armor, no thank you, right? But now I can look at the battle value and see, well, this thing has the same battle value as like a griffin, right? Are there lots of games where it would be useful compared with a griffin? There certainly are. It's obviously not going to be good if enemies are allowed to kite it or just kind of like get out of its range. So I think really it's a mech that would be good on small maps. If you're playing on a really big map, I don't think it's going to be good, but on a small map it can kind of head towards roughly the center. And those auto cannons provide it with a decent range coverage. If you have a location that can get you line of sight to a lot of the map within 18, you know, ideally within 12 hexes of the mech, you can do a lot of damage with this thing. So I think it has its uses. I think it's very situational. On a large map or a map that has built up terrain, this mech is gonna be pretty worthless. So 
it's it has uses it is it is a, a mech with a narrow role but for the battle value it can really succeed at that role next up is the best mech i'm going to be talking about today the archer 4m now this one checks a lot of boxes for me especially in the resilience department close to maximum armor check it's got case to protect it from ammunition explosions. It has a standard engine. You know, this is pretty close to as tanky as a 70 ton mech can be in this period. Offensively, it's certainly solid as well. Two LRM 20s with Artemis. I don't super love Artemis 4 for the battle value. I think often it doesn't really earn out the points that you spend on it, but it's not terrible by any means. You want to use this mech for direct fire primarily because otherwise those Artemis 4 systems are going to waste. So basically I would say the way you want to play this mech, I've said this before about a lot of archers and it goes doubly for this one. You want to use it for direct fire until it starts to take a whole lot of damage. And then once it's damaged to the point where you start to worry that it might get taken out, then you move it back out of line of sight perhaps and use it for indirect fire or you can keep with the indirect fire as a backup plan in case your opponent outmaneuvers you and your archer isn't in line of sight anymore that's how you want to use it the one thing i just got to add is you pay for what you get i can think of even though it's very strong i can think of a lot better deals for your battle value than an archer 4m it's a great mech but it is pricey. Archer 5R, the ER Large Lasers Archer. I mean, look, this one just runs too hot. They didn't give it enough heat sinks. It's only got the heat sinks to fire the ER Large Lasers. What about the LRMs, right? There's really, you know, it's, it's, it's just one of these mechs where the heat makes it a bad deal by itself, right? You're not gonna overheat this thing by 10 every turn. And it's not a bracket fire mech where you can say, oh, I'm going to use some of these weapons at long range and other of these weapons at short range. No, they're all weapons that have a 14 hex medium range bracket, so they should all be firing together. So this is just a badly designed mech. I don't recommend it. Also, it skimps on the armor to throw on other weapons that it doesn't have the heat sinks to fire. Not a good one, in my opinion. Now, the Archer 5S. This thing is not a disaster by any means. It's kind of like a Crusader, basically, in an Archer body, which is generally the thing about the like S series Archers. It's got some medium pulse lasers, so it can deal with light mechs pretty well. It has NARC, so you know if you take it in a NARC lance, then that's fine. It'll give you another NARC launcher as well as LRMs. But look, it's just not doing that much for you. It's, it's an okay heavy mech. It's not a great heavy mech. More of a crusader than an archer, like I said. And the XL engine is, you know, a significant price to pay compared with the 4M for not that much of an increase in your destructive capability. Now, the good news is that it's quite a bit cheaper in terms of battle value than the 4M. So, you know, it, it's not a terrible mech to take if you want to save some BV points. Again, treat it like a crusader. The 5W Archer, the, the Wolf's Dragoons Archer, very similar, you know? Um, it's a NARC-based mech, again. It doesn't have the medium pulse lasers, but it does have SRMs that can synchronize with that NARC. So it's got a little bit more synchronicity between its weapons. But again, this is nothing special and it's, it's fine, but it's not a great mech. Done with the archers, moving on to the single assassin from this period. You know, this one gets rid of the SRM launcher, which was not that good, but I mean, it, what it does by getting rid of the SRM launcher is it replaces the medium laser with a medium pulse laser. Now for a seven jumping mech, a medium pulse laser is a good weapon. But on the other hand, You've got a mech that has just kind of no specific focus. It's got a medium pulse laser and an LRM-5. Those are two weapons that don't work well together, 
right? You don't have any overlap between the ranges where those weapons do well. It would have been better if they had dropped the LRM, kept the SRM, and then added the medium pulse laser. And, you know, maybe put some armor on the thing or something, because it doesn't have that much armor. The mech's not a complete disaster. No mech that jumps seven is a complete disaster. You know, this thing can be used for kicking, right? That's really what you want to do for it. Jump next to your opponent, kick them, repeat, right? It's not rocket science. It's not a great mech though. It's really, the, the armor is really insufficient for what you're paying for it. I would much rather take a spider. I would much rather take a venom. You know, this just isn't a great one and it's not that good of a deal for what you get. Atlas 7K, this is the headliner Atlas from the 3050 tech readout. You know, it definitely ups the weapon power. It replaces the medium lasers with ER large lasers, so you got that range. And it replaces the AC-20 with a Gauss rifle, so you got the range from that. So what you end up with is a long-range bombardment mech, or like a mech that's going to stand on a hill and shoot down rain fire at enemies. Is it good? Well, I mean, it doesn't have enough heat sinks for one thing. If it had a few more in it so that it could fire the lasers, the LRM, and the Gauss all at once, it'd be a much better mech. As it is, it doesn't do a good job of handling its heat. Another thing about this mech is it has a problem that I've noticed in this channel and a few other mechs, which is it takes an XL engine and right underneath it, it puts a Gauss rifle in the same side torso. That means the armor is really the only thing standing between that side torso and the mech dying. Because once you get through that armor in that side torso, there's a very good chance that the mech is going to die real soon with another hit to that side torso. So the B I'm giving this mech for its combat score honestly is maybe generous. Like it might be a B minus or even a C plus. And then, yeah, it's definitely not worth it for the more than 2,000 battle value that you pay for this thing. Not a good deal. Not that great of a mech. It's not terrible, right? You could play with it. But, you know, you could go out there looking and find a much better mech for less battle value than this. The Atlas 7S is a much more traditional Atlas. It's basically like a straightforward, slight improvement to the AS-7D in terms of what does it do, it just adds more rear weapons to the AS-7D. So there's nothing special about this thing. It's basically just an AS-7D. You run up and, you know, as fast as you can, which is not very fast, and you try to get that AC-20 into range, you try to get that SRM-6 into range, and you fire some kind of pop gun missile blast with your LRM-20 as you're on the way in. If you can get in close, then you do some real bad damage. And if you can't get close fast enough, then you've just wasted 1900 battle value on this juggernaut. So it's fine. You know, it has a role. It plays that role. It's not always the best role, but in that role, it's good. And finally, here's a real disappointment. The awesome M. You know, this thing, three ERPPCs, there's no way you're going to get enough heat sinks to shoot those, and indeed it does not. You know, this thing's going to overheat by five points a turn, just firing its three main weapons together. Not good, right? And then it's got some extra streak SRMs. Who needs those on an awesome? It's not so bad, I guess, but it puts the ammo in a leg. Um, I mean, I'm not necessarily the world's biggest opponent of leg ammo, but it's not a great idea. You know, there's no way to protect it with case or anything. Of course, the mech has an XL engine too, so case wouldn't really matter as far as uh, what would be a mission kill for this mech. You know, this is just, you take an awesome, you weaken it in terms of its resilience by giving it an XL engine. You weaken it in terms of the firepower it's putting out by making its main weapons uh, too hot for its heat sinks. So on the basis of all that, of course, it won't surprise you at all that I give the mech a negative review. And its battle value is still pretty high, right? It's more BV than you would pay for 
an original 8Q Awesome. Honestly, any game I'd rather have an 8Q Awesome on my side than this pretty much. It's, you know, it's not, it's not a complete disaster, right? There's a lot of mechs that I would rather have this compared with those mechs. But when I compare it to the original Awesome, it's garbage, right? It's just nothing special going on. They've taken a classic and they have made it much worse. So unfortunately, that's a pattern that we will see as we continue through ranking mechs from 3050. There's a lot of mechs where the supposed upgrades are downgrades, right? They had this new technology. They're like, oh, we're gonna slap it on without much thought to the ways that we slap it on. And it doesn't enhance the combat capability of a lot of the mechs. So stay tuned for more of this. But that said, within the rough of Tech Readout 3050, there are a few gems, as we saw, the Archer 4M is one of those, and we'll definitely see some more as we go through this tech readout, so get ready for that too. There are some nice mechs, you just gotta dig around to find them in Tech Readout 3050.